G'day gamers, Ranger Tony here with a rye bashed tutorial video. So if you have played any games that require modding, uh, you may have come across a program called rye bash. Um, I particularly use it for the Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion and the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. This video is going to show you, if you are a Linux user, how to install Rybash under Linux in your Steam Proton environment. This is important because if you need to use Rybash with a game that is managed by Steam, um, you need it to be installed in such a way that it recognizes which game it's installed with and everything works properly. So we're going to go through and we are going to set this up and get it working for you. Um, I have links down below of a lot of the steps that are happening. There's actually also links to a guide called the Guide to Running Skyrim Special Edition, which um, I got from a Reddit post about the Solace Project. Um, that was the helper that got me going for a lot of this but it was also various other little searches around the internet finding ways and 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 getting things to work okay so the first thing we're going to need to do is download rybash um, if you are on nexus mods look for rybash under the game that you are playing if rybash supports that game uh, in particular i would it, it it should be the same copy of Rybash in all the different games. Technically, if you're running multiple games, you probably should only have to download the one copy of Rybash and you can use it for everything. But I find in Nexus mods, it's safer to pick the exact version of the game that you're running and search for it and download it. So in this case, I'm running Skyrim Special Edition. I will select that as my mod search for Rybash, and I will download it from there. So you will need to download the standalone executable. This we are currently testing in the final version of the Skyrim Special Edition, and we are, test we are doing all of this in Rybash 308. If you're using an earlier version or a later version, some of the details of the uh, tutorials that I will be doing may be slightly different. They shouldn't be for this installation, but caveat that that's the version I'm working with here. So we need to download that file. I've already done that. Step two, rather than immediately installing this file, we're going to set up the environment. So what we need is a script, a, a, a file that we can run, which will run the Rybash program inside the Steam Proton library that is set up for the game in question. In this case, Skyrim Special Edition. So how are we gonna do that? Well, we need to go into, Sky, into uh, Steam, go to the game in question, come over here and choose properties. Um, if the interface has changed since I did this video, look for properties, and we want to look for the launch options. So in the launch options, we are going to add proton underscore dump underscore debug underscore commands, all in capitals, equals one space percent command percent now not to get too deep into it but what this is doing is telling proton the proton library that it should create a file which sets up the environment and then it should run the standard command that is used for this game okay so that's what we're going to start with uh, this doesn't matter if you are using a special version of the compatibility library. None of that matters. All you need to do is do this command. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is we need to 
run this program. So in this case, it's Skyrim. If you're doing this for Oblivion or any other, just hit play, launch that. Now, at that point, everything should be ready to go. As the game starts up, Okay. Now, we don't care about the game at the moment. What we need to do is we need to go to our computer. This is the root of your drive, not your home folder. On the in the computer, so slash temp, there will be a proton underscore username folder so the username that i log in as proton tony in my case under that folder is a file called run that is the file that we want so we can copy that to another location and i recommend that you put it either in your home folder or in a folder in your path and probably the easiest one to find in your path will be your home folder dot local bin you should have a dot local bin folder so we're going to go and put it there because that makes it really easy for us to use that from now on now if we go back to our you can also do that uh, from a terminal by typing in cp for copy temp slash proton tony slash run and then we want to copy that to home in my case tony dot local bin and you want to give it a name um, now it is called run but we can rename it to something else um, if we just left run there and hit enter that will copy the file um, you can either go to your home folder go to your dot local bin and then rename the file um, or you can in if you're going to use the copy command instead just put the new name here so if I go Skyrim Rye bash Right, and that will have created the Skyrim Rye Bash. We'll ignore the run. That was the one that we manually copied previously. So we now have our file. Let's open that up in a text editor. Um, dot local bin Rye Bash. Skyrim Rye Bash. Uh, it, I called it Skyrim Rye Bash because if I'm going to have another copy of Rye Bash running for other games like Oblivion, I need those file names to be different so I know which one to run to get it to work. Okay, so this is the, this is the file. A little bit intimidating, a lot of information in here. There's a couple of things that are important. Okay, so you, oh, also at this point, we should close the game. We don't need that anymore at this point. So we'll close the game that we had running and move on. Oh, and for safety, remove the launch options that we had. We don't need those anymore. They can go away. Uh, important to note, if you had previously something in your launch options, you probably should have copied those, pasted them into a text document somewhere, and now you should put them back to what they were. Just saying, but you should know to do that. Um, so we'll get rid of Steam for the moment. We're back in the Rybash uh, script that we are going to use. So the very first thing, we have to make a couple of changes here. Now, the first one is we need to make a minor change to the path command. This tells the computer where programs can be found and in particular we need to tell it where the proton command is going to be and unfortunately this here which will be at the start of your um, path there that doesn't actually give the correct 
uh, path to the proton command. So what you want to do is you want to select all of that and leave off the slash dist slash bin. So we want to copy all of that, control C, come back here, paste that in and then put a colon after it. So that's going to say, look first in this folder for a file, then look in that folder, then look there, then look there. Each of the colons designates a different location. So that's change number one that you need to make. Okay. If when you run this command later, it says proton not found, you haven't put the correct location there for the path. Okay. So proton not found, check that you've got that path correct. Um, the next change that we want to do is we want to take this line here that says wine prefix, take absolutely all of it, including the slash at the end, copy it and go down and paste it in on the line below. Then take off the PFX and the slash and then change the wine prefix here to steam compat data path all caps underscores instead of spaces okay so that tells proton where the uh the base path of the data for this particular game is going to be and then the last change is to remove this very last line which we don't need and replace it with proton run mopi with a capital m rye now we need to do slash space bash dot exe now the reason for that some idiot put a space in the file name and that's how we make sure that that space works the other option is to uh, put all of this in quotes so we could also do it like that um, but for now we'll stick to my original and we'll go slash space bash that is ready now to run rye bash editor tony here um you need to save the file at this point before going any further but we haven't installed rye bash yet and the reason we haven't is we didn't know where we needed to extract it and that's why we did this file first because this number line number four up here this is changing to the directory which is going to where we're going to run this command from that is the root of the skyrim install okay and that is where that is the exact location where we need to install rybash okay now um something like this should be the default location on your computer but it is possible to create alternate locations for where steam will install that is why we're doing things in this order so that we can look at this command and be sure that's where we need to put it so under our home folder dot local share steam steam apps common skyrim special edition so we can go to our downloads and we can get our Rybash download that we extracted before. Open it up in your extraction program and go extract. And then we are going to go home dot local share steam steam apps common Skyrim special edition because that's what we had here dot local share steam steam apps common skyrim special edition so you just double check make sure you've got all that right share steam steam apps common skyrim local edition uh, we'll go and it's done it has copied the files in there so we can confirm that we can come over here we can go home dot local share steam steam apps common skyrim special edition there is the mopi folder everything should be ready to go 
So now we should be able to, now that Mopi is installed, we should be able to go to a terminal and just type in Skyrim Rybash, the name of the, the, the script that we created that we edited a moment ago, hit enter and it should run Rybash for us. And there we go. There is Rybash all up and running. We can see the default mods that we have installed. Now I have a handful of mods that were installed by um, Creation Club. So that's why there is more than the default. Uh, the blue ones up here are your, um, is the base Skyrim, the update and the DLCs. These purple ones are the um, Creation Club content and I believe these other ones are from the uh, mods feature inside Skyrim. It, it will not let you manage these. Uh, you cannot delete these. You cannot uh, uninstall them from here. Um, it recognize, Rybash will recognize that those are managed elsewhere. But we've got it up and running. That's all you need. That is it. Now the only other thing that I will point out if you are running a custom version of the Proton client. So over here, I mentioned that the compatibility library, if you have downloaded this one here, the, um, the GE uh, Proton library, and you're running that, then when you go to shut down Rybash, you will notice in your terminal window that it hasn't actually finished. You can hit enter, you don't get the, t the command prompt back. Hit control C. You won't have that problem if you're using the standard Proton libraries. I haven't worked out what this issue yet is, but it's nothing to worry about. Hit control C, everything is fine and you can continue. If you don't hit control C, it will technically think the game, Skyrim in this case, is running. So you won't be able to run the game from Steam because it'll think Rybash is still running and it won't let you run the game. So you want to hit Control c when you come out so that you can then start your game. That's it. Um, I hope this was helpful. It is a quick and simple way to get Rybash running under uh, Proton on Linux. This will actually work with a little bit of modification for any application that you want to install alongside your existing games. If you have any sort of mod manager, any sort of, I don't know, um, any sort of patch program, anything that is supposed to run alongside a program on Linux that is a, a game under Steam or under Proton and you need to install it in the same location, these steps will work and allow you to run that. Okay? Um, so just letting you know, if, if that's what you need to do, you can follow these steps um, and just rather than installing Waribash, you can install whatever you want. Um, so I hope that helps. If it did, leave comments down below and stay tuned for the next Rybash tutorial. Thanks a lot. Bye.